and see them. We are here and we are live with our beautiful sister, Hilda Lopez, and, and truly honored to call you my sister and, and a beautiful sister in the background holding beautiful space who Marla and I are also honored to call her our dearest sister, Melody. And, and because of Melody, we got to meet Hilda and Hilda, you you show up in this world as Melody, but this is about to you because as we just talked about, what makes God laugh? Telling him your plans. And, yes. and we thought this Zoom call was going to be about someone else and talk about divine timing at the exact time we're having this call right at this moment that you're gonna share in a moment what took place two years ago. But Hilda, our beautiful, beautiful sister, this is the world. World, mm -hmm. this is our beautiful sister, Hilda. <sighs> Thank you, Scott and Marla, for hosting me today. It, as you said, it is, it is a very monumental day for me today. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my dear friend, Mel, who introduced me to you and Marla. And it's because of Mel, who's been, I, I have formed a tribe after my husband passed away two years ago today. I have formed this tribe of wonderful women in my life. But Mel specifically introduced me to you and Marla and specifically the tree of life. But to answer your question of what God means to me today is it's my faith what I wake up to every morning, who I give thanks to every morning, who I feel abundantly blessed every single day. Because a lot of times we are faced with so many different things in our lives, whether it be work-related, whether it be family-related or job or a, a, a tragedy, like what happened to me and my family, that I thank my lucky stars because of my faith that I am able to say, I am able to walk forward with a clean conscience and know that I'm in the right path because I have faith. So that's who I say thank you to every morning. Oh, and, and that is so spot on and so beautiful, Hilda, because you're so correct. When we wake up every day and you know, you've heard Marl and I and Mel speak about this so many times. When we wake up, we open our eyes, we give thanks because we, we opened our eyes. Oh, we lost you for a second. Oh no. Oh, hold on, uh, one moment. <laughs> Talk about live, I love this. Oh, yeah, let's move it in. we're gonna go inside. Okay. We're gonna go inside. <laughs> one moment, please. Hold on, we're going to pause for a station identification. <laughs> but while you guys are moving, I'm gonna continue sharing what you just From a said. message from our sponsors. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> message from us. What we were just talking about is, Hilda, you just said how beautifully we wake up each day and we, we're grateful because we opened our eyes and think about how many people may not have opened their eyes or we have a roof or we have a bed. We're able to get out of bed. We are so blessed. And, and just like you said, you start off every day with faith and gratitude and trust to continue to move forward and that was so beautiful and, yes. and what we I, I do and I wake up and I have this little I live in a little community and I have a little grassy area and that's my spot everybody everybody can relate to not everybody has that but everybody can relate to that little spot that they have in their house where they go to and that's my go-to spot I know that's my time where I get I have my coffee I go into a small and in my deepest moments of despair which was not that long ago i went to my spot and i'm like i don't know why i'm going through this right now i don't know why this is happening i have no idea why this has been put at my doorstep but it's here i have to deal with it i have to make the best of it this is what was placed before me and so it's not like it's all bad because it wasn't I had a wonderful marriage. I had a beautiful husband, a wonderful husband, a wonderful father, 
I was very blessed because we were married for nearly 14 years. And I know a lot of people these days are not even fortunate to be married five. So I was very fortunate that I had the experience of being blessed with a nearly 14 year marriage. So I, it was very easy for me to like, there's no negative spot for me to go to. This is something that happened, something that I have to deal with. And I had to pull, I had to like dig in the trenches and pull on the happy spots, the happy moments, the things that were meant for me. And if there was one thing that I could, and it was his, his quote, <laughs> it, there was a movie where this came from, but he said, always remember the good times. <laughs> he was like, always remember the good times. Like, and that we did. And it was like one of those things was like, I always, everywhere we went, it was always in my daughter, you know, who's now 13, was nothing but positive things that she remembers of her father. And, you know, there, there's no reason for us to remember anything different. So if I had my sense of telling somebody who's going through a loss or experience a loss is like, hang on to the good things, that's what's going to get you through. That, that is that is so beautiful, Hilda. And and as Mel and Marl and I and you were just talking prior to coming onto this call, I just want to unpack what you just said because it was so beautiful and so profound that again, right now when this call started two years ago to this day at the exact time. Right now. You received right a call. Right now, right now I received a call that my husband was in critical condition in the hospital. Talk and I was, I was at work, wrapping up part of my day, getting ready to go home. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Oh, this isn't so. I, was, I went from one moment of celebrating somebody's birthday or whatever was going on in our life at the time to my husband is in critical condition at the hospital. So I rushed from where I was to that and had to make all the, I, I was put in the position of having to make split second decisions. My daughter was at tutor. My, you know, all these things were set in place just for me to pick up at 530 at the end of the day. And my whole world was turned around in a matter of minutes. And a couple of hours later, maybe if that, I don't even, you know, even at this point, I don't even know what time he died. But in a split second, I had to make all these decisions. Had my priest come make last rites. All these things happen very, very quickly. So sometimes God puts us in situations that we never thought we would ever have to deal with. Maybe we looked at ourselves and thought, I could never do that. Oh, I couldn't do that. But you know what? When the time comes, and if you're a person of faith that believes, I think that is, that is crucial to believe, to believe in something, to have faith in something. Because that, and my husband, this was another thing he was to say, at the end of the day, Everything will go shit wrong. We always have our faith. That was his like plain thing. He always said, at the end of the day, all we have, and it's so true. Everything could go so wrong at any particular time. But like, what do you grab to when there's nothing else to grab? There's nothing else for us to grab. At the end of the day, that's what we go. That's what we go to. And and that's exactly what I did. And this, this the funny thing is, is like we we're Catholics and. I was, when I met my husband, this is a funny story. When I met my husband, I was like, oh, I was baptized as a Catholic. I, I told this story at my wedding. I was, I was baptized as a Catholic. I made my first Holy communion as a Catholic, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just wasn't confirmed. <laughs> I wasn't confirmed. So here I go meet this beautiful Catholic boy who went to, you know, elementary school, high school, everything was Catholic. And of course, when I get married, well, there's, of course, I'm going to get married to the Catholic Church. Of course. Well, Hilda wasn't confirmed. <laughs> so I had to, I, I didn't have that sacrament. So here I go, 
at the ripe age of 30, going through my Catholic classes to be confirmed. Okay, so then this happens, and then I'm able to get married in the Catholic Church. And so we have this whole. <laughs> but I always say, and I said, I said it at my wedding, I said it at his funeral, that my late husband was very instrumental. And, and this goes not necessarily for Catholic, I'm saying this in a, the broad spectrum in terms of faith, faith, because we all believe in God, no matter what denomination you are. So he reeled me in. He went like, he went like, he got his last one. He was like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to bring you, I'm going to reel you back in. And he did. And I said it the day of his funeral at, at the eulogy. I said, you know, he was very instrumental for reeling me back into my Catholic faith. Because I was like, oh, oh. I'm like a free spirit, you know, <laughs> God in every direction, but you know, God brought me to him. That's who I became. And that, that's who I am today. But, and, and so for that, I always say, you know, I, I have never prayed so much since I became a mother and a, a, well, a wife and a mother, you know, that's because we have so many things to look after as being a mother and being a, a wife. And so I think I lost my tra my train of thought, but 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 he was very instrumental in me, you know, reeling me back into my faith. Wow, that I I the the courage that you have, the the strength that God gave you, you you received it. It came from above. A hundred percent, because it came from above. Because you had to make sure. You had everything taken care of your your family your child you I did you know and that not that evening my daughter was not even home so this all happened I'm leaving work I'm going to meet my you know my my husband at the hospital to see if this is even my husband what they're talking about and then once I realized this is all taking place then I have to make all these decisions in a matter of maybe a couple of hours Yep. where I have to ultimately tell my daughter that her that her father died and I don't know how I did it I don't know how it happened wow. by the grace of God I was given the courage the words the knowledge to, to to tell her her father died and to this day that's a day that like today it was like we I celebrate it. I am very, I am very okay with today. I know some people, you know, may not like to celebrate certain things, and I respect that. You know, I I like to go to the cemetery. I put flowers. That to me, that's very comforting. I know other people don't like to do that because it makes them sad. So I always like to respect people's feelings that everybody grieves and sees things very differently. Um, I'm a very touchy feely, very emotional, tactile oriented person that to me, I need that. And my friends, oh my God, my friends, I, <laughs> one thing I was, I would say that before Paul, before my late husband, I had a lot of friends, but like after Paul, I had a uh, plethora of friends. <laughs> I have just been blessed with abundance of friends. And, um, and you, you also know, have a pretty big family around the world right now. Yes, I, yes. I'm very, very, very fortunate. But I, you know, it's been two years. And like I said, you know, when we started early on, I say a lot of people will say that, oh my God, you're doing very well. I'm doing well for a reason. Yeah. It's not because, I, I mean, I fortunately had the foresight, you know, like early on what I needed, what I needed for my family. I don't know how, but it just, I was blessed with that, that I'm very lucky that I had all the tools at my disposal. And not to mention, I had a very good employer at the time that was all about me getting well. Oh. So very, very lucky. Uh, I, it's, I've, I've been a work in progress and continue to be a work in progress, but I will say that my friend Mel, who I'm forever <laughs> grateful to, who gave me this intention stick after I put this on, <laughs> some magical things started happening. <laughs> when uh, I say that, I mean, I, I think that was the very first thing that I, very first intention I put on here was let it be, because there were some things surrounding 
circumstances of the, uh, that I was living with that were very unknown. And I had to get to the point in my life where if I wanted to go forward as a productive citizen and a working and be a good mother that I knew that whatever was going on in my life, I had to let it be. And I, I know, I know in my mind that one day I'm going to look at this with a clear lens. I will. I will. I let it be. And since then, I put love, trust, all kinds of stuff. And all that, I'm all that in a bag of cherries, okay? I really am. I am so lucky to have such good friends in my life because that's really what it boils down to. All that in a bag of cherries because that's what God wants us to be. We want to, he wants us to be happy. He wants us to be happy. That's it. I could sit here and be miserable, lonely, and, and mourning over something that I cannot control. I can't do that. I am young and alive and living my life the way God wanted me to. You, you are such an inspiration, Hilda. It's, <laughs> it, and it's, you are so spot on. Literally, you are speaking our words verbatim. And, and what I'm going to share with you for validation, and I don't know if we ever got that chance to share. And of course, I remember like it was yesterday and Mel told me about this accident with Paul and what's taking place and how you needed the intention stick. But something I'm gonna share with you that, and this is not about me, but it helped me and Marla when we lost a family member, my mom, Marla's mom, her dad. And in, in the Kabbalah, which is very deep studies of the Bible and the Torah, it, it goes very deep spiritually. But it says, if you were to take every beautiful and happy and joyful and incredible moment in Paul's life, and you add every person's in the entire world, happy, beautiful, joyful, incredible experience in their lives, it doesn't equal a grain of sand in the largest desert in the world of the amount of happiness and joy and bliss that Paul or Marla, or my mom, or parents are experiencing now. And just like you validated, if you were to be sad, Paul would be pissed because yeah. he's in the most beautiful place imaginable. And you already know he's with you and your beautiful family every day, guiding you and sending you messages and sides. And you nailed it by saying, I chose to celebrate his beautiful and blessed life. And every moment as parents, as our parents, we had together and remember those beautiful days versus being sad or mourning or, or your life stopping. You chose to live it and celebrate it and move forward, not only for you, but for your family. And I, I can't give you enough praise, not that you need it, but to say how proud we are of you to choose that path and stay in that state of bliss. As you said, God told us, or the light, the creator, the source, the spirit, whatever that is to anyone out there, to be in that state of bliss and happiness, to see everyone the same. As you know, we talk about, there is no black, white, pink, yellow, brown. Right, there is right, no right, Christian, right. Jewish, Buddhist, Muslim. We are all the same and we have to see a, each and every one as the same. We have to live fearlessly, but most importantly, what you just showed to this world, to live in that state of bliss and happiness, no matter what is thrown in our past. And a lot, like you just showed us to this world, was thrown in your path hard. Hard, yes. Chose, you chose to embrace it. And you took that and you continue to move forward. And the love in our hearts for you is overflowing. And, and you already know how much we love you. But for you to share this with someone maybe right now that is going through that doesn't have your courage, your strength, your outlook, to give that beautiful soul, man, woman, child, that inspiration that they, 
that you actually can say to them, this too shall pass and you've got this. Get up and live your life and remember those beautiful moments of that individual that may have lost their life and celebrate it. Right, I know, I know someone on my Facebook right now who lost her husband not that long. I think she lost her husband before I did. And I know for a fact, you know, because I see a lot of very, very, very gloomy, sad posts, you know, but I hope that she's seen this because, and I always try to send something positive her way, but it's kind of hard to do that. And it was it, coincidentally, and I, I, there's nothing, there's nothing that's ever a coincidence. I went to school with her <laughs> and I have not seen her in like yeah, 30 years. And we got reacquainted again, coincidentally, after our husband's pass. It was just the most, just very odd that that happened. Divine. And so I like to look at that as like a message of, hey, maybe you need to kind of get reacquainted with her because she may be not, and, and her marriage was a lot longer. I think she got married a lot younger than I did. And so her marriage was a lot longer. So she has much more, you know, deep seated, rooted memories, you know, but I look at her honestly, and I think of the intention and I think of, you know, all the, the goodness that has come from just, just being around positive people. I've always, I, that's one thing I say, I would say for anybody with intentions or, or anything, surround yourself with good, positive people because that's the last thing you need is a, a Debbie Downer. <laughs> you, I mean, surrounding yourself with good, positive people. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it goes back to intention because if we're surrounding ourselves with negative people, it's also very draining of our energy. Yeah, exactly. And if, if hmm. we then are hanging around or surrounded by negativity, then we start putting out sadness within ourselves or depression mm -hmm. within ourselves or anger or frustration right. and as you know what we put out from our hearts comes back in so if we are depressed more depression is what you're going to receive in your life and exactly out sadness you're just going to receive more sadness and and that is not where we want to be like you said we were made to be in bliss to be happy no, ma no matter what no matter we're made what. to be happy. <laughs> happy that's it and and uh, our perception is that situations that we go through as as tragic or as tough as they are in life we the perception is that they're bad but like you said you know we can sit with it and embrace it and understand what it's here for and it's to help expand our soul to help our growth while we're here, whether it's with you and, you, and your daughter or ex extended family or friends, just like you said about a particular friend that you've known for a long time who's going through the same thing, yes. you know, because it's to help bring your voice out to help others. And that's what we're also here for, for yes, for us to be happy, but at the end, we're supposed to be giving. To be giving. Exactly. So I am looking forward because I've had so many blessings. I am looking forward to passing on my intention stick and yeah. hoping that I will be able to, to get another intention stick and fill it with more good intentions. So I always tell people I have good intentions. <laughs> yes. You do. And, and you, you said at the very beginning that you believe your intentions. You have faith. I do. I do. And I, and I will say time and time again, it's all about faith, yes. no matter what religion, denomination, it doesn't matter. It's our faith and it's what we believe. And it's, and these are positive affirmations that I carry with me all the time. You know, I, I wear this, I could be wearing a statement necklace underneath my suit, whatever. And I have my little intention stick right there. Cause it's like my little reminder of like, and you know, I feel, let it be. Let it pass. <laughs> And that I, was my first that was my first intention i'll never forget let it be and and people don't understand which is so beautiful that was your first and and as we marl and i found out as we've been on our journey in kabbalah it's not the 22 words or the 22 intentions we received each one of those words each one of those intentions 
have 72 different interpretations. Mm -hmm. So the be, let it be not only is for the interpretation that you had, that my past no longer serves me. I have to let go of what I don't need to carry or look back on, but to be present, to be in the now. And, and it, it's probably one of the most chosen because it's forgiveness, right? It's letting go and sending that love and saying, thank you for those gifts. Because one, as you know, we can't change our past. Why do we go back and dwell on it? We don't know what tomorrow brings, as you know. So we have to be present and celebrate every day to the fullest and live as you do in such a beautiful state of bliss and happiness and inspiration. Because again, no coincidences, you reconnected with your friend after 30 years because you had the wisdom, the courage to share with her because she was going through something or maybe still going through something that you're going to help her get through or whomever is seeing this, that same inspiration to give to that beautiful person. And you have so much to give. That's why you're here. I already see you helping so many more and, and the people that are going through loss. I'm telling you, you're, you're beaming and that's <laughs> your gift. Because again, God gave you that wisdom to share with others. Because when we keep it for ourselves, that's selfish. When <laughs> Seriously, because yes, think about if Mother Teresa, Jesus, M Moses, uh, Buddha were, yes, they were given that knowledge, that wisdom. They could have gone off in a cave or an island and lived every moment of their lives and happiness and joy but that wasn't theirs to keep, it was theirs to share. Right. And that's why we're all here in this world. Whether it's a little bit of wisdom or a lot, we have to share that and inspire and uplift and help someone get through maybe something much worse than what someone else is going through. And right. when we do that, as you so know, that's what brings us our bliss and our happiness because we help someone fill up and move forward, and they're going to do the same thing for someone else. That's why we're here collectively. And uh, well, I hope there, I hope that there is somebody out there that I could reach. Yeah. Um, and and if they have any questions, maybe they could re reach out to you if they somebody. But I I definitely was down in the dumps and with didn't know that that I had all the resources that I had, but they were within. Yes. I mean, yes, I had all these other resources, but the main, all the resources were within. And thank God. All yes. I can say is thank God. And thank God for my faith. Thank God for my good friends. And the rest is history. Yes. And maybe one day I'll write a book on grieving. Who knows? Yes. No, no. <laughs> Again, reaching as many as possible to help them, to help others get through something because I don't think grieving necessarily has to be bad. Like, grieving doesn't have to be bad. No. Not at all. Everyone, you're right. Everyone grieves in their own way. You know, we from the thousands of people we've spoken with around the world when someone lost a loved one, you know, some say, I, I didn't shed a tear. I didn't cry. Is that wrong? No. It's, it's how yeah. we handle the situation. Again. Yeah. Exactly. You celebrated Paul's yeah. life. You honored right. his life. And it's funny that you say that about the tear because I have some friends who are very outwardly tearful when they come here. These are some friends that were very close to my husband that are very close to me now. And they come to see me at least once a week and they bring dinner and we just sit and have wine and eat. And there's not a, a, a time that she comes the wife and she's always she hears a song and she cries and they always like he always says like I you're so strong I never see you cry I don't I never cry in front of my friends I never cry in front of my my daughter because I I need my daughter to see me as a strong I, I just don't do that but I cry alone I mean I have my moments where I I'm normal I'm, I'm human I cry but it's my crying time it's my crying time and I cry I cry on my own terms and to my own songs and to my own tune. I cried to my own tune, okay? <laughs> and so she, so that we used, that just rang and struck a chord when you said that about the crying. 
because we all, you know, whether we cry alone, we cry with a crowd of people, we cry and that's perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. That is so beautiful and, and also it's okay. It's okay. It's okay not to be okay. We're human. And if we didn't go through those ups and downs, we would never grow. We would never expand our beautiful souls. And that's why we're here to grow every day. And I know you've heard Marl and I say this time and time again, but it's not being better than anyone else in this no. world. It's being better than who you were yesterday. Exactly. And um, I don't know if I can add anything because i i'm beaming from you i just want you to know the, the love the inspiration you've given marla and i is seriously off the charts and i know for anyone watching this how blessed they are now because of you and and wow yeah. is there anything you can add i, I mean you, you've said it all really <laughs> both of you said it all i've been holding space and, and yes i think just you are such a bright light, a bright light. And I can feel your, your love, your compassion, your knowledge, your courage from across this, this call. Uh, and, and you are living exactly the way that is intended for you. And and you will, you will be helping so many others, 100%. whether it's a book or speaking or visiting or whatever that may be for you. But I know in my heart, you, like Scott said, you've already, just for people listening to this, you've already inspired and impacted so many. Absolutely. So we thank you for opening your heart oh. and being vulnerable by sharing your beautiful story. And, and we're honored again. No coincidences. This no is, coincidences. Just happened to be right at the same time. <laughs> truly divine timing. Yes. And I think you found the title for your book. I think you've got the title for your book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll to go back I, and listen to this episode. <laughs> and and we again. You already know how much we love you, and you already know you're with us every day. And we are walking arm in arm on this journey together. We are. All the beautiful souls that we're going to continue to touch around the world. Because as you know, and Mel knows, and Marlon, and I know, this is about us collectively. And we were brought yes. here in this lifetime to touch as many souls as we can. And more importantly, as you do know, and why you do have the strength and courage, is to continue for our children, our grandchildren, our great, great grandchildren to grow up living a life of intention and to have that faith and that trust because they're going to live on that path with light and knowing we're gonna to continue to help others and break through all the negativity and divisiveness in this world. Because as we say, not on our watch. Not on our watch. <laughs> not on our watch. So you already know our sign off that one, we honor you, we love you, you inspire us, and we're sending you and your family and Mel blessings and intentions of so much gratitude, so much love. I, I seriously, I'm so full of yeah. and, and I will And I will leave you with this because I said this in Paul's eulogy, light, life, and love. Oh, and that's who you are that's who you are i'm trying <laughs> every day you're it's doing. all about trying you're, you're not trying doing. you are doing <laughs> because you have the faith right so which I, this is so perfect marlon i say marlon i say there's no try or there's no hope even though hope is such a beautiful world and such a beautiful word because how can you say to someone, oh, you need to have faith. But if they're so pushed down and going through something so horrific, no, we have to give them hope to know that right. a, a better day is coming, that they will have faith. Right, but exactly. We say, we say hope walks through fire, faith, faith leaps over. Exactly. We have faith. Exactly. 
and, and you got this girl, you know this. Thank right? you. <laughs> we love you and celebrate. Life. We're gonna celebrate with you on this beautiful day of Paul's life. And, Thank you. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Love you, love you, love, love you. Love you. Life, life, and love. Life, <laughs> life, and love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank uh, you. Goodbye.